Hello, welcome back to Tidbit of Torah. After Pesach, here we are with lots of bread and deliciousness. And it's my pleasure to be joined by our CEO, Laura Infant, here today. Welcome, Laura. Good to be here. So this week, our Torah portion is a double portion, which means we read two partio together, um, and they fit well together. We read Tazria Mitzora, which is a really interesting set of Torah portions about the condition of Tzara'at, which sometimes we translate as leprosy, which is a skin condition, a disease that has a lot of complexity to it. Uh, you might read the book of Leviticus and wonder why does the Torah spend so much time talking about this one skin condition? But in reality, if we look through the lens of everything we've been through with COVID and all that we experience in our lives as caregivers, as healers, and as human beings that suffer ailments, um, we understand that perhaps this Torah portion is telling us a lot about the complexity of health and illness in our lives. And so I would love to hear from you, Laura, about how do you view illness and its complexity and what have you learned from your own personal experience with illness? Well, thank you, Rabbi. Um, illness is very complex and it needs to be compartmentalized. So um, when I experienced illness, I left the medical stuff to the doctors. They knew so much more than I did. Um, but the other part of illness is what happens internally and also what happens to the people around you that care for you. And um, when I was ill, a lot of people stepped up and called me and then Rabbi Grunewald called me and he asked a question that stopped me in my tracks and it was a simple question. It was, what do you need? And I didn't need food. I wasn't hungry a lot. Um, I, I didn't need shelter or obviously the medical stuff but what I told him I needed after careful thought was connection with the HEA staff with who I missed very much while I was away and um, Rabbi Grunewald absolutely took that to heart and within the next few days the entire HEA staff showed up at the balcony we lived in an apartment at the fourth floor they showed up it was COVID so they couldn't come in so they showed up uh, underneath the balcony to sing to me and it was incredibly healing. It was exactly what I needed. And what I learned from that is that deciding what you need, it's an easy question to just flick away and say, I'm fine, I don't need anything, but that's not true. We, we all need something when we're ill. Um, and this Torah portion teaches us that what we need most is community. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where we put our spiritual and our emotional healing uh, in, is, is the community. Thank you for sharing that. I love that question, what do you need? And, and the community aspect and the social aspect is so vital. We see that in the Torah portion because the priests play this important role of helping welcome people back to the community. And there's a lot of rituals involving birds and other interesting ritual items involved in it but we all play that role we all play that role in like not only helping people back to the community but in being responsive to what they need in order to reconnect as well i find that um when one of my children gets sick and it happens to be a time where both parents are home one person seems to go immediately to the physical realm and be on band-aid patrol and the other parent seems to go to the emotional support role and that sometimes is supporting the child that is hurt or it's supporting the other child that's having uh you know worried about their their sibling and i find that um it's not always the same parent in each role but we that there's a complexity to the kind of response that we need when someone in our lives uh, needs that kind of physical support and attention, but that also has a com uh, the complexity of emotional support, social support, sp spiritual support for us. So what would, what would you like to recommend to other people that are caring for, whether it's for children or for sick loved ones, what advice or, um, or wisdom would you share to others that you learned from your experience? Um, well, I would go back to my take on the golden rule. Instead of thinking, 
what you would need, well, think about the other person and what they would be doing if they didn't have this illness barring them from their normal everyday routine and think about what they may need. Maybe they like to read or do crosswords and you can furnish them with something like that. Um, don't, don't try and do what you need, but try and think about what the other person needs. And, and if you don't know, be like Rabbi Grunewald and ask, what do you need right now? Because I can help furnish that. I love that. What do you need right now? My seven-year-old asked me that uh, last week, and it took me so, so by surprise for the question, because like you said, it's not something that we're used to always answering really on and thinking about it ourselves. And um, I, I, can't, I, I think we all appreciate that question when we need it. So thank you, Laura, for joining us thank today. You and for the invitation to think about how we can be a healing source on multiple levels for people in our lives and to receive some of that healing from others. Thanks, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.